Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'll respond to a question by one viewer, and this is about what is the habilitation. Or you may have heard in some countries, such as Germany, there is a title known as Doctor Habil. And what is this? And is this required to become a professor in some countries? So let's go into some detail about this particular word. So actually before the word postdoc became quite prevalent there was a postdoc which was there in germany as you would expect the germans came up with the phd they also came up with the postdoc so the habilitation is the highest degree which you can get in many european countries and essentially sometimes this is known as the doctor habil sometimes it is also known as the private docent or pd so Essentially what this is is that it is a period of study or research after your PhD for several years which essentially culminates in a thesis and in a presentation or colloquium which is held in front of a lot of people where you essentially present whatever you have discovered or the topics which you have researched on during this particular period known as the habilitation. So essentially what happened is that a long time ago it was felt in Germany and this was probably sometime in the 17th century and so on that a PhD may not be sufficient for becoming a professor because a PhD may let you know a lot of stuff and become a good teacher but essentially to become a teacher of researchers you need to do this kind of habilitation which is a long period of research without a supervisor. So remember that whenever you are ha doing a PhD, you have the advantage of having a PhD supervisor. And so a lot of the thinking, a lot of the planning, some of the help as far as journal publications are concerned is given to you by the PhD supervisor. So sometimes it's difficult to figure out whether the PhD is completely the product of a person or it is the product of this person plus a substantial in input from the supervisor. Now in some cases the supervisor input may be very less if you are working for a detached professor maybe 10% or 20% however in some cases if you are working for a very intrusive professor it may be 70% of the work has essentially come from the professor here. So what happens in many cases is that if the professor has written out a research proposal and then you have simply gone and done this work then what happens is that this PhD may have a large influence from this professor. So essentially what happens in this habilitation is you really come up with two theses. One is a inaugural thesis. This is your actual PhD thesis and then the second thesis is sometimes known as the habilitation thesis. So this is the thesis which comes out at the end of this habilitation period. Now this particular degree is valid in a lot of countries in Central and Eastern Europe. So I'll name some of these countries here. It's not a comprehensive list, but you can consider the German countries, for example, Austria, Germany, Switzerland. There are also countries such as Belgium, Czech Republic, Belarus, Denmark, Finland, Greece, Hungary, Moldova, Poland, Russia, Ukraine, Sweden, Slovenia, Slovakia and so on. So essentially you can see that this concept may have spread from Germany and gone around to its neighbors there. So let's look at some more aspects as far as the habilitation is concerned. There are two type of such situations. One is a cumulative situation. So here essentially you write a number of papers and then you combine them all together for a cumulative thesis. The second is one very long thesis essentially comes out of your work. So this is also possible here. Now the biggest advantage or I would say the biggest strength of this habilitation thesis is that you no longer have a PhD supervisor. So this is completely your own work and must have a high level of scholarship which is considerably greater than the PhD thesis. So this is something to keep in mind. And if you are in the sciences this would often require many papers sometime 10 or more papers may be required here for a period of many years, maybe five or more years. And if you are on the humanities, it may ent entail that you write some books in the process. So that's something to keep in mind. Book writing is very important in the humanities and the social sciences. Now, when is this habilitation finally given out? It's given out after you do all this work, you write it up and then 
defend it in a public lecture in front of people. Now, in some countries such as Germany and some of the Central European countries I mentioned before, the habilitation is a requirement for a full professorship position. So, some universities or countries have pretty draconian law that if you do not complete the habilitation period, then you can be a lecturer, you can only teach a lot of courses, but you are not doing research, you are not supervising PhD students and so on. Sometime they may even tell this person to actually leave the university, but in many cases they will probably give him more time to complete this habilitation and then absorb this faculty member. There is a lot of controversy about this requirement also. One of the problems it created in Germany is that there is some kind of brain drain going on, so people do not like to be subjected to this long period of uncertainty as it is before they are actually given a permanent position as a professor. So this was my take on the Dr. Habil degree. So for people who are not sufficiently satisfied with getting a PhD degree, they can go for the habilitation and if you are somebody around the world who would like to get one of these degrees, then you can head to one of the many countries I mentioned before and try to get this Dr. Habil title in front of your name. So that was my video for today and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.